In this session, we're going to look at question one. So we're not going to delve massively into the question types. We're going to leave that for a later video. We're just going to look at the structure and what kind of things you're going to need to look at researching um, in order to complete this particular question successfully. So before we go on, we we'll just look at the, the whole component three exam. So it's important to know that it's made up of two sections, a section A and a section B. Section A has four questions and it's each question is worth 10 marks, so the whole section is worth 40 marks. Section B has two questions. Um, one's going to be 20 marks and one's going to be 15, so the whole section is worth 35 marks. That is slightly different for the AS. The AS only has one question um, for section B, which is the comparison question. Um, so today we're just going to focus in on question one, which is part of section A. So what are the key things that we're going to need to understand, need to research in order to complete this successfully? So it's important to know that question one can be taken from any of the areas of music technology. So it can be taken from anything that you learn in component one, anything you learn in component two, plus all three of the areas of study. Um, it's important to know that it's more likely to be a short answer question. So something that's just worth one or two marks. Um, another good thing about this question is it will only be, or it will most likely be, questions from an audible characteristics of a recording, which basically means you have to put on your headphones and listen to it in order to be able to answer the question effectively. And once again, this question is worth 10 marks in total. So. We've only got the, spec the sample specification to look at here. So, so after this year, we're going to start having lots of different mock exams, which should be great. But for this year, we've only got the sample, which, which kind of makes it a little bit harder to prepare for. However, if you understand that it's going to pretty much come from every area, they can kind of give us some indications as well. So this first question that we're going to look at here is looking at creative processes um, or creative effects processes. So it looks at how the delay has been applied to a snare drum. The good thing about this is it's already given you the three things that it wants you to cover. So it already says, right, um, listen to it first and then say, to, where is the panning positioned? Where is the snare drum and the delay panning positioned? So just by saying left, center or right will get you that mark nice and easy. Um, the next thing is feedback. So how much feedback does the delay have? Now, it's not expecting you to be... At massively accurate here it's only a one mark question so you need to think you know is there a lot of feedback applied is there very little feedback so if it's very little feedback you can probably say something like it's going to be less than 20 percent um, if there's a lot of feedback you, you can pr probably say something like it's more than 70 percent and so on and that will get you the mark the next thing you need to understand your note lengths. So whether it's a very short note, so you'd say is approximately um, a sixteenth note delay time, or it's an eighth note or or a quarter note delay time, um, and that will get you the mark. Size. So very simple, um, you, but you will have to listen to the track in order to understand that. This next one then a multiple choice question. So you're going to need to understand the sounds of of lots of different instruments. In this particular case, it looks at um, keyboard instruments. And each of the keyboard instruments does have a very distinct sound. So the clavinet from the Rhodes, for instance, will sound different. Um, well, all of those there sound completely different. So it's, it makes it slightly easier. If you understand what those individual sounds sounds like, you're going to get that mark straight away. So the next one is describing panning. So anything coming from um, your mixing skills will come in handy here. So where is where is the panning in the mix for the organ? Um, and look at the specific reference time. So it's only asking you to reference it from 50 to 55 five seconds. So don't look at anywhere else. It's got to be in that reference. So it will be looking for it will be looking for an answer like it's panning from left to right or it's over in the left speaker or something like that. So in this next one, you need to know a little bit about your history and development. So you will need to understand, and, and you'll find this a lot, that um, questions for analog tape will come up quite a bit. So make sure you do have a, a really firm understanding of analog tape, multi-tracking, and, and, 
elements like that because um, there is a very big emphasis on that for this particular specification. Um, then you need to understand how recording techniques happen. So it says that the guitar part has played all of these. Can you identify some of the recording techniques used? Once again, it's only one mark. And then finally for this last one, identify two ways in which the multiple guitar parts have have been different, differentiated in the mix. So you could look at levels or you could look at panning. Um, it, it will probably only come from levels and panning to be fair that one. So things that you need to look at in order to prepare for this question. So research and development is going to be massive. Um, the first piece of research and development I've said about is just make sure you understand what each of the electrical instruments or instruments in general sound like. So if it's asking you to identify the difference between a clarinet and a, and a violin or something like that, you just need to understand what each of those sa they sound like just to get those marks. It may not seem very significant, but losing two, three, four marks um, on very simple questions like this can make a massive difference to your overall grade. So just keep that in mind. You're also going to need to be able to identify instruments, instruments in stereo field. So you should be listen, listening to tracks and just try to pick out where each of the parts is placed in the stereo field. That's a very good technique. Um, next, as I said before, you will need to understand the differences between analog tape, multi-track recording, um, digital recording techniques. All of the digital side of things gets covered very, very easily. The analog side, because we, especially in my center, we don't use the analog tapes anymore. It's very difficult to, to demonstrate this, but there's lots of really good resources, and we have a few on Music Tech Student as well to help you out there. And then finally, understand the different types, um, understand the different parameters of the various popular effects. So reverb, delay, modulation effects, and distortion effects. Um, so for this session then, for the next couple of days or whatever, go away and look at look at this piece of research, go and find yourself some tracks to listen to, um, identify it, um, and just start doing your research, getting prepared for this particular question. In the next video, we will look at question two and see how that differs and see some of the techniques that we're going to need in order to complete that. So I will see you in the next video.